We love jumping into games and trying out all of the different systems, gameplay, mechanics, and figuring out everything there is in the game. Well, recently we of course got to play the preview for the first Ascendant. So in this one, we're going to wrap together the things that we wish we knew before playing, so you guys have the advantage and know what's up with several of the different systems and things within the game itself. So if you do enjoy this, make sure to show support by clicking like down below, because it does help. And you can subscribe and click the bell, because we have loads of videos planned for you guys every single day. Recently, the team here have been trying to figure out what the best endgame system is for a looter shooter game like this. So I'm going to pose this question to you guys. What's the best endgame system or loop for a looter shooter game? Let us know in the comments down below. And just before we jump into it, I want to clarify that the preview we played isn't the final version of the game. So some of the things, the details and values or more may change from what we can show you in this video because we only played the preview. But for the overall systems, it's probably going to be the same or very similar, so you can kind of know what to expect when you play for yourself. So let's jump into it with the selection of Descendants. Within the first Descendant, you will have a variety of characters, or we could say classes, to play. These are your playable classes that offer different playstyles to try out in missions. They are pre-made and you cannot customize them, they are kind of like characters from League of Legends or something like that, where they're preset with their own abilities, but you can play as them. The good thing is that each one does feel unique to play compared to each other, and in in terms of their abilities and theme, they are quite distinctly different. However, in a looter shooter game like this, the shooter part still plays a large role in the game, so you will largely be running around and shooting, while the abilities play a role between your cooldowns. There is a caveat to this though, as some classes, such as Bunny, who's one of my favourites, who's all about speed and running around while damaging enemies based on how fast she is travelling, can mix that up a little bit, but shooting is still a core part of the game. So some characters do mix it up a bit, while others are more stationary and shooting focused. In total, there are 10 descendants to play, however one of them is basically an upgraded version of Lepic, so it's more like 9 and a half. Some of these classes are more DPS focused, while others are more tanky focused and others are more support focused. So it's up to you for what kind of role you want to play in your team. Furthermore, you can actually unlock these characters through Descendant Research, which will require a bunch of materials and time, kind of like the Warframe system for how you unlock and research new frames within that game. Let's move on to the weapon system and gear. Within the game, your weapons will obviously play a big role as your primary source of damage. However, there is a bunch of different weapon varieties for you to try, although you can only carry three three at one time. Interestingly though, each weapon seemingly can have a different ammo type indicated by the little coloured bullet icon by the weapon. So you want to try and spread this ammo type out in each slot so that you have a unique ammo reserve for each of your weapons, otherwise if they're all using the same ammo, you're going to run out quite quickly. Weapons have different coloured rarities and generally the higher rarity the weapon, the better it is as it will have more damage as well as more stats on the weapon itself. However, these stats can also include defensive stats so it's kind of a mixed bag on what you get with the RNG. Outside of your weapons, you have your gear, where you have four gear slots that essentially improve your shield, health, and other core stats. So you definitely want to remember to upgrade these slots with the drops that you get from enemies as you play. This leads us nicely into the rune system, which is where some depth comes into play. There are six different types of runes. There's Storm, Torrent, Wave, Thunder, Haze, and Descendant. The first five will impact your weapons, while the Descendant rune will impact and enhance your character itself. Each type of rune has its own page and rune capacity. Different runes will have different capacities, and runes can also be enhanced to increase their effect, but it will also increase the capacity that they cost. You can also dismantle runes to get resources to enhance your other runes, and you can get items to increase the capacity of the rune pages themselves. These runes are where a lot of extra stats will come from, as well as unique effects when we're talking about the higher level and higher rarity runes at the end game. So a lot of the end game will be around farming the runes you need and leveling them up to match your weapons and your descendants playstyle. Interestingly though, I believe the type of weapon will dictate which page of rune that they link to. Each weapon will link to one rune page and will get the stats of that rune page. I'm not 100% sure that it's down to the type of weapon, but I think it is. Essentially what this means is that once you know the weapons that you like to use, you only need to fully spec out three of the first five rune pages, as rune pages that are not linked to a weapon will not be used and will not give you the benefits of the runes in that page. This means learning the weapons you like and sticking to those type of weapons and then upgrading them as you get better rarities is going to be important, because if you swap weapons 
quite often, and you're switching between all the different rune pages, then you can't focus on one rune page to increase the capacity and enhance the runes on, as you're going to be spread thin across each page. So essentially at endgame when you have set weapons that you want to use, you only need to focus on three of the first five rune pages instead of all five. But if you intend to switch your class and change your weapons, then you might have to invest more time and resources into the other pages. Next up is one thing that you definitely want to know which is called mastery rank which is independent from your descendant level. This is kind of like your account level and is raised by defeating monsters, attaining proficiency, or descendant XP. So playing all of the different descendants and leveling them up is a great way to to boost your master rank level. This will become important because increasing the level will give you additional accessory slots and rune slots which directly contribute to your power. And next let's go over end game activities. This might change or be expanded upon on full release, but from the high level characters we played in the preview, there were two end game activities to do, world missions and void intercept battles. World missions are co-op activities and within the playtest only one type of mission was available to us which was the consecutive survival mission. The the task was to survive for as long as possible in a worsening environment while enemies are rushing you or the objective that you're defending. It was kind of like wave defense, but had to be completed 10 times in a row. We found even on the high level characters with good gear, these were very challenging and fairly repetitive. For the other type of activity, it's VIB or Void Intercept Battles, and we have a dedicated video going over this one in more detail on the channel already that you can check out. But essentially, these are four player large boss battles that require teamwork, learning wipe mechanics, and shooting weak points of the big bosses. So now you guys have a rundown of the first Ascendant and what to expect when you jump in. Let us know what you think from this information in the comments down below and do click like and subscribe to show support to the channel because we have loads planned for you guys over the next few days. On the screen now are two more videos that we think you will enjoy if you found this one interesting or helpful. No problems if you don't want to click them, but if you do, tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.